How's it going everyone? This is Lee from Function Dynamic and this will be the first video of a multi-part series where we're going to be creating a Zoho Creator application from scratch. Now, I've been creating Zoho Creator applications for quite some time now and I know the ins and outs and I'd like to share some of them with you. Through that experience, I know that there are a few good ways to do things and I know that there's a few not so good ways to do things. So this is going to help us, or help you rather, create applications that are scalable and will save you headaches down the line. And as we begin, what we see here is the starting screen. So with any Zoho Creator application, if you create something from scratch, this is what you're going to be seeing. And it will tell us to create the new form. And I know you're gonna be excited to jump in and start creating your new form. But before we do, it is absolutely important to first have a plan and understand what is going to be involved in the application. So when starting any application, what I like to do is I like to jot down the different entities involved. And this will help us understand uh, what's needed um, out of Zoho Creator and when building the application. It's going to save us a lot of headaches down the line and help us scale. So for this, uh, what we'll be doing is a sales app. And right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jot down the different entities, at least for demonstration purposes involved in this application. So now that we have the basic entities put in, um, it's important to keep in mind that this is not a comprehensive list. Of course, we could add invoices as they pertain to um, customers. So each customer will have invoices that are related to sales, of course. Now, sales people too, we can track them uh, and their sales through invoices as well. Maybe you might want to do commissions. Uh, but the point of writing down the entities themselves is to break things down and allow us to scale. So later on, if we want to have a commission-based system, we have these separate entities from which to build on. Now, if we just jump in without a plan in place, then we might have to backtrack later on down the line. Now that we have our plan drawn up, we're ready to create our new first entity, and we do so by creating uh, a new form by clicking that button and then selecting the left-hand option here. As we mentioned, we have customers, so we'll type that in, press create, and doing so will bring us to the form builder page. And we see a lot of white right here. That's because we haven't added any fields yet. As soon as we do, this will start to get filled up. Over on the left-hand side, we see um, all the fields we can throw in. So we have basic fields, advanced fields, um, etc. And a lot of these are fairly self-explanatory while others are um, can be quite complex. Um, for the purposes of this, we'll keep it simple, but if you have any questions on any of the fields or would like a video done, make sure you leave a comment in the uh, down below. So for a customer though, uh, we'll start with a name. We'll drag that over and we can see that the uh, we now have um, the name field uh, showing up in the middle and we can edit the properties over on the right hand side. Now by default, uh, the field name is name, but we could change this and this will change how the it appears on the form itself. So we could change it to customer name. We can make it uh, mandatory. So anytime you enter data in, it must have a um, customer name. And then we can, and for the uh, name field itself, we have some extra options. So if you want to include Mrs. or Mr. in front, we can uh, enable prefixes and edit the choices down there. For now, we'll just keep it simple and keep it as first name, last name. Um, and then from there, what we'll add in is an email. And we'll just keep that as is, but we'll add in mandatory and not allow duplicate values. So doing this will not allow us to have uh, a single, or well, two different customers having the same email. And we might want to add in a phone as well. So let's just throw that in. 
and then press done. And once we've done that, you can see over on the left hand side, we now have um, customer and all customers. So this is the form itself. And this is a uh, list of all the customers. We'll cover this in a later video, but just be aware that um, by default, when you create a new form, it will create a form from which you can um, add a new entity and then have a uh, default form from which you can view all the uh, entered customers. Now that we have a customer in, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, create the rest of the entities. All right, now we're back and we can see over on the left hand side, we have a whole bunch of different entities um, with both their forms and reports in place. Now, just to take a look in, we can just jump into products and we can see things like uh, product name, the price and in stock. So a number representing the uh, quantity in stock there. Now, let's say, for example, we want to make an edit and we have our fields in place and then realize, oh, we need to add some more. Doing so is as simple as clicking um, the form, not the report, um, and then go to hover over the uh, center here and click open form builder. So in the case of a customer, we might want to add in an address down the line. So Maybe you forgot it when you were initially building out the application or maybe business requirements change. That's okay. You can just go in, add in a new field, and then press done. And then that will apply it to all existing records and all future records in place. So let's say in all customers, you already had 100 customers. Throwing in a new address field for example, is not going to change any of the data, but do keep in mind that um, if your requirements change and you do need to add in different fields, um, that they won't be populated just by throw, throwing the uh, fields in. Uh, you'll need to f go back and then fill in the addresses for all the existing customers if need be, which is why it always makes sense to come up with a plan first, just so you don't have to do all that backtracking. Now, if you were paying close attention, you might have noticed that the entities that I've built out are not quite complete. And in fact, if we take a look at uh, the sale entity that I built out, go into the form builder, we can see that it is very incomplete. And all we have right here is just the dates. Now, we know that sales will likely have customers and they will likely have salespeople and they will certainly have uh, line items as well. Now, the reason I held off on this is because to connect the two fields together or the two forms together, rather, we need to use a an advanced field called the lookup field. Now, lookup fields are absolutely fundamental um, to creating a scalable application, but are somewhat complex, at least more complex than just a name field. And they deserve a um, video on their own, which is why I'm going to cover that in the next video. But for now, we can take a look uh, at settings and look at the uh, schema builder. And we can see that we do have all the entities in place, and we are ready to tie them up to one another. Whether you already have a creator application, are looking to get started, or just wanna have a one-on-one -on -one conversation to get pointed in the right direction, always feel free to reach out to us at Function Dynamic by going to www.functiondynamic.com, click the Contact Us link, and fill in the Get Started form. Once filled in, you will automatically receive an email with a link to schedule a time that works best for you. This was Lee from Function Dynamic. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next video where we cover lookup fields.